Come on over. No, no, oh, this oh, way. this way, sorry, yeah. Look at Pajaco over here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I mean, while I'm sitting here, why not take advantage of it? That's the way I look at it. Can you unclip your microphone back there and stick yeah. that on? Yeah, you go. Get you, come get on TV. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, there we go, that one. Right. Thank you, Terry, uh, for doing that. I'm going to get you, I'm going to get some in here. Uh, why not? You know, oh, it's good on over here. There you go. You're that's perfect. You don't have to get right beside me. That, that's good for you. I know. No, just you talking. Yeah. Uh, Getting close. Yeah. There we look, go. So, look who's here, everybody. Look who's here. It's a good buddy. Okay, I'll tell the people, as we often do, tell the people your name and yep. where you're from, man. So, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Paul. I'm from a place called Woking in the UK. Uh, which, doing the math, that's like about 25 miles southwest of London, uh, if you want to get your geography. There you go. So, yeah. there you go. Now, this is your uh, second year over yep. here, man, and you, of course, traveled a long way mm -hmm. to get here, and we're, you know, we're glad to have you, just because you brought these. It's good yeah. enough for me. <laughs> these are chocolate turkey slices. These are the best things they ever made yeah. outside of Australia. It's a close call there. Mm. Uh, but, uh, uh, so, you were here last year, yep. and you've been in town for a couple of days now. So, what brings you back to, uh, I don't want to say this because I mean, it's our event, so yep. hopefully it's because it's the best thing ever, but what you brings know, you back here if so you again? A, a mixture of, I had an absolutely awesome time last year, and whilst obviously it's, it's quite a, an expensive deal, I had such a, a nightmare of a time getting back last year. Oh, I remember, um, yeah. And long story short, I won't go into it, I managed to wangle some flight credit out of the airline that I flew back with, and mm. it pretty much paid for my flight. Um, yeah. So that was cool, uh, and then John's kindly, kindly let me stay again. So pretty much the trip has cost me. I mean, I'm, I'm going to kickstart after this, and just to put it in perspective, the kickstart strip is is technically costing me more than this trip, just because of the way things have panned out. So yeah, mixture of semi bad luck and good luck, and just I had a really good time, and I, I really did want to come this year. Um, uh, I'm really glad that I made it again. Well, so. we're, we're, I'm yeah. super happy you came yeah. back, man. Now you know you've been in town for a couple of days, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, uh, what have you, you guys have been into some stuff. Tell the people what you've been up to since you've been to town. Here. So we went to my first ever baseball game that I've seen in, I'll, in real life. I wish you could have gone to yeah, that. Yeah. I thought that was quite a treat. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't quite probably see it on camera, but we, uh, as Graham was with us as well, we got a little bit burnt um, being, being white skinned people in the bright hot sun, but we, it's all ask good. You a question yeah. about that. Yeah. Since you brought it up. Do you, is there not a lot of sunburn going on over in your neck of the woods? Oh, yeah. I mean, you get you get the summer kicking off in the UK and you yeah. go to the beach and there'll be lobsters everywhere. So, like, it's, um, so over there, when people do, it's common to see people really get burned up. Oh, not yeah, used yeah. To it, it's, it, yeah, because you, you don't, because you're not used to it, you just go out in the sun and you just don't, um, yeah. you don't expect it. I mean, we, we weren't out in the sun for that long. Yeah. But yeah, I got no, uh, knee burns, arm burns, neck burn, but it'll be fine. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, and then you guys went to the uh, Air Force Museum yesterday. Out and this is a pretty good drive, by the way. It's yeah. about two and a half hours. That was a here. long uh, drive. Uh, yeah. Our good buddy TSI Matt. Did yeah, the thank, honors. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, thank you Matt, again. Matt's Very a, cool. He's yep. a quality guy. Yeah. So, what did, what did you guys think of? Uh, of uh, because you, uh, let me tell you something. We know that the UK's got awesome museums. Yeah. I see it, like computer. I would love to go see. But is there? Have you seen anything quite like that? So, in your neck of the woods? so yeah. So if you go to it's. Uh, it's the REF Museum, REF Museum in, in its northwest London. Yeah. And when I first walked into the, the Dayton Museum, I thought, oh, okay, this is about a similar size. But then when you start, oh, and there's another hangar and another hangar. So the REF Museum is a, probably about like half, two thirds of the size of this one. Yeah. Um, a lot of great planes. But yeah, if you ever get to London that and you like your planes and history into aircraft, that's another good one to see. But yeah, it was, it was awesome. And I saw. Um, the Blackbird, the SR-71. Yes, that is a real piece, isn't it? And I, my dad took me to my first ever air show when I must have been like less, like eight, ten years old. I yeah. can't quite remember. And that, the big deal of it that year, um, and that was like 1980-ish for, for you guys. Uh, so the big deal of it that year is the Blackbird's going to be there. And I only have like, you know, from being a kid, that vague memory. But it's like, wow, the Blackbird. So it's literally been like, you know, 30 plus years since I've seen it in the flesh last. So yeah, it was cool. So. That, you know, the Blackbird, and it's, you yep. know, one thing about going to the uh, Air Force is the immensity of it. It's, it's just, <coughs> it's immense, and it's, yep. I mean, it's a lot of walking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You walk out of these hangars that are just, they're the biggest places I've ever been outside of, like, a ball field, a big, you know, they're huge. And these airplanes are just massive, these helicopters. It's just, I mean, it's, a, it's a real sight to behold. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Now, you, of course, we sat up here last night as we uh, record this. It's 
uh, fr Friday morning. Yeah. We, we were in here last night setting up, and I don't know if you had a chance to uh, really look around here. Have you seen anything that uh, strikes your fancy? Oh, so everything. Uh, so I've literally, so, so Bill Bright has just bought a, a Magnafox Odyssey. Yeah. with all of the TV overlays but not only that he's bought an original Magnavox TV yes. so hopefully someone will take it the big wood number never touched one in my life yeah. like an actor and I've just played on it and while yeah it's not great by today's standards when you think that this was the first of its kind and what they did to get this up and running it's it's have, brilliant have you played with this thing yet? i literally i was just playing with graham it's we the, just it's yeah. the dangest thing yeah. and yeah. those paddles i'll tell you you hit put some english his uh, i was playing his son yeah. who was just thumping me because he was great at with the english oh yeah but i love the overlays i mean it's a real throwback that's really pre even predates me yeah because those were are, are those really weren't prevalent the, the overlays yep. like that when i was younger you know, we got the Pong systems after that, but they were more like that. They had really sized them down, yep. and they weren't from Magnavox. They were the you know Ataris and all the ripoffs and yep. stuff. Uh, so, uh, that, but don't, that was a great. I, I, when he pulled that out of the car, I couldn't freaking believe it. Yep. You know, and we're, we'll take or we'll look around at everybody's stuff yep. here a little bit later. Yeah. So, is there anything in particular you're looking forward to as the weekend unfolds here? Uh, just meeting and, and hanging out with people. I mean, as I said, it was a year ago that I was here last. Yeah. And. Yeah, I don't know if that's just the way my brain works, but it feels like I was here just last week and everyone's like, hey, how you doing? And you know, everyone's so friendly. So it's just it's just nice to hang out with you know, my tribe, I guess. Yeah, you, know, I, so, yeah. I, you know, I, I was telling the boys last night we were talking, I wish that would, everyone here just sort of lived in a neighborhood. It would be yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, you know, we'd yeah, have a great yeah, time, but we'd never yeah, get anything done. Yeah, it's so, a problem. Well, we, need, yeah, we need teleporters from Star yeah. Trek. That's uh, That would make life we easier. Do, I do want to mention, I'm going to do this while you're here, since she's one of your coaches, but I should shout out to Mitsuyama. He hey, Mitz. He's going to make it this year, and he's also not going to get to make it a Kickstarter. He's going to double wham. Oh, no, you know, I know he was touch and go so, on Kickstarter, so, uh, so that sucks. So, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully we'll see him again the yep. next time around. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, it would be it would be fun to have him over here. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, Mitch is a good guy. Yeah, he's fun to hang out with. Guy. Yeah, he's a real guy. Yep. Well, listen, I'm going to turn you loose, my friend. Thank you very much. Flax milling around here. We're going to try some new audio craft. So Marvelous. Thanks a lot. Get always a pleasure to have oh, you come around, my awesome, good buddy. Awesome. Yep. Have a good one and have fun, and we'll chat with you later. I certainly will. Featured table stuff. Brilliant. You're going to be front, you're the now the uh, you're now the expert at California games. Yeah. Cool. Don't forget to watch the live stream and buy a virtual ticket. Yeah, but, cool. <laughs> There you go. Well, what a chill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. We're getting the ride. Both y'all, come over here. Come over here and sit down. I'm going to do an interview. Let's get, let's get in one. Either one of you, or both of you. Who's the least busy? Come on, I'll get you and then I'll get you. Stand, I got, I'll come and get you in a second. Come on, Laura, get over here, man. Come on around, man. I gotta take this lunch break so I can talk to some people, man. That's right, because I like to bring it out of people. Here, flip that on your on your shirt there, man. Oh, this is. And you got. And by the way, we're streaming. Thank you, thank you, Scoob. By the way. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to you move. Got stuff clipped in. Doesn't matter. It's okay. Take it. Everybody, this is a special treat. Uh, for all we've been talking to. For a long time mm. online, finally here in the flesh, baby. Laron Giroux. Laron, tell the people uh, where you're from and, how, and your travel down here. How'd you get down here? Oh, yeah. Hello, everyone. So, uh, travel down from Montreal actually to Toronto in bus. Uh, last night, well, previous night's bus, sleepless. I almost had it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to Toronto, met uh, the Retro One guys, and then we drove down here. So just wait a little bit. Come on, I'm gonna bite you. There you go. Drove yeah. down there, yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. good. So pretty, pretty long trek down. Per up yeah. There. Now, let me ask you. So you're up in you're up in Montreal there. What's the retro scene like up there? Are you heavily involved in clubs and whatnot up there? No, I just I just know that there is a retro scene. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's just some Quebec people who are organizing a yearly uh, thing, but yeah. I've never been to unfortunately, no. Now, are you so you're, are you a member of any users groups or anything up there? No, no, not so yet. So your outlet for retro gaming is through, sort of yes. through us. Then, yes, you know, exactly. Like, yeah, that's exactly the case. That's great. You know, because now the funny thing is you've got all the options in the world. Up there, <laughs> so it's funny that you would, you'd be hanging out with us, a couple of goofballs from West Virginia. You've been, you've been. Uh, uh, I mean, I've seen you on, on our stuff, and you're at Disco forever. It seems like. I mean, you've you've been around for quite a while uh, as a viewer and a listener. Uh, yeah. How did you come across the, uh, our podcast? And 
I, I do you remember how? Yeah, I, I do remember. I, I was actually um, like it's around 2016 yeah. when you guys started. Yeah. I was uh, reading the uh, English Amiga board. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I participated to to it quite a bit, and I read some article from the Dreamcatcher at the time. Sure, Dreamcatcher, good friend of ours. And he mentioned the podcast uh, on there, and I was like, oh my god, I didn't know about that, and I I I search and found you guys and never let it go. <laughs> you know, Dreamcatcher, I don't know if you, you ever check out his channel. He, he, he does all sorts, he's out oh, of his mind. But he's a real creative guy, but he's, yeah. he's nuts. And he did a lot of the writing yeah. on our webpage for a while. And he was really good, real good guy. He's the one that, he came up with the idea for Megathon, if you believe that. Oh, that, that was that his was idea. Who sort of executed it from there. Now, uh, what in your collection up there, what kind of retro collection do you have up there? Oh my God, I, I have way more than I should have. Uh, I actually went, uh, coat, you could say, uh, a lot of stuff from um, a lady in Vermont whose stepfather had died. Yeah. And the guy had amassed a huge retro collection over the years. Yeah. And I went there, uh, someone tipped me on social network and I went there and I, my God, it was a, a treasure trove of stuff. And I bought, I, I, I would have bought the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but I couldn't bring it back, so I bought a lot of stuff there. Uh, Coco. Right. That is a huge collection. Uh, if you didn't have enough room to bring it back in your car. Yeah. Now, this is Commodore stuff or just a box? Oh, box? everything. All, all over the place. Can you name some stuff in? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Apple IIs, Macs, uh, Coco computers. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, I've got two of them. Uh, unfortunately, they're still in boxes. Uh, Commodore stuff uh, up the wazoo. Yeah. Atari, uh, disk drives, you name it, uh, Macintoshes, everything. Yeah, yeah that's it's one of the scores. So you don't have to do it, you're, you're done, effectively. You're, you don't need to get anything else, right? Well, not now, I need to repair them. <laughs> <But. laughs> no wonder you, now you've got good buddies with Frank over there. That's how yeah, you exactly, slip, yeah, yeah. slip that stuff over to him. Now, do you have a favorite amongst the collection? Like, what if you if you put yourself, are you an Amiga guy, a Coco guy, a Mac guy? Like, what's your bag? What's your, or are you just a two? even to make to pick a side i um, i mean i like everything yeah uh but my favorite is the amiga that's yes. that's that's my computer yeah 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 now, did you grow up with an amiga yes 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 what, I, what did you have back in the day i got a 500. oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the one right yeah. now in your area would you say amigas were they more like hardly anyone down here had them but there are a lot more floating around up in your area yeah, th there were quite a few i knew a few people who had one uh so but uh, it was still difficult to exchange floppies and yeah. stuff but uh <laughs> yeah man, I, we managed did you do the bbs thing back in the day where you uh, i tried i tried but without much success because in france the the phone network was much more expensive oh, local yeah. calls, so yeah, it was pretty yeah. pricey here back in the day i mean you had to be real careful because when you're a, and i was a kid early on so I was like, well, I hear these phone bills are tough. Ah, let's call Toronto or whatever, log in or Vermont or, or Colorado or wherever you want. And my, my dad would be like, who the heck called like Quebec or whatever? I'd be like, ah. <laughs> and they knew it was me. I couldn't get away with nothing. Now, I gotta ask you, obviously you're natively a French speaking speaker. You yep. get a cool accent, right? Here you do, you, you find out about this podcast with me and Bo. And at the time, I'm sure it was the lowest quality of audio because we weren't doing what we were doing. Did you, did you have any trouble figuring out what we were saying? No, never, never. Really? No, yeah, no problem. So, no. so because I never thought I had a real thick West Virginia accent. I mean, sometimes you kind of drift in and out. But I mean, I've had people tell me like, "Man, you guys sound like the two biggest hicks I ever seen." I'm like, "Well, you know," and I, and I always wondered if people could understand what we were talking about half the time. No, I, I had no problem. I. I I, the first time I heard a native English speaker was yeah. uh, actually when I was working in France. Yeah. We, had, we were uh, working with some people who were making the, the compilers for uh, the PlayStation, uh, yeah, yeah. PlayStation 2 and so on. And they wanted to sell us their newest uh, version. They came to us and the, the, the project manager at the time contacted me and another guy. And they were, oh, you guys are the, the, the only two ones who can speak English get in the room with them and talk with them and, yeah. and try to figure out what, why they're here. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was the hardest time I had in my life with, with speaking English because they were from Texas. Oh yeah. And they had a pretty strong, strong and, accent. And, and we were like- a different accent down there. Str yeah. Struggling to understand it. Oh my God. But we, we got through it. You know, 
it's funny. You just, I just, just say, listen to you talk, it reminded me of something I totally forgot about. So, I had an Amiga 1000, and I remember reading in a magazine, there was a thing, they were advertising this thing that would hook in the 1000 and give it slots, and so sort of like the Bodega Bay, mm -hmm. right? I wanted one of these things so bad. I can't remember the name of it, you know. So I, 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 I saw it in a magazine at one time, and I never saw it again. So I waited and waited and waited. I never, so I finally asked, like, I'm going to call this number and talk to these guys. And the number was up in Montreal. And so the guy's like, oh, hell. He answered the phone, and he, I was like, and here's me. I'm like, I'm, you know, 20 or whatever. I'm like, hey, I'm calling about this thing. He goes, uh, hold on. He, he brings in a guy. Probably just like you. It was like, it's like, hey, I was like, hey, do you speak English? He goes, I speak some English. <laughs> and so I'm trying to work it with this guy. And we're on the phone for like 20 minutes, and I never did figure out anything. I had no idea what he was talking about. He didn't have any idea what I was talking about. And I guess the thing never got released. I never saw it. You know, but it's a kind of, the funny thing about Amiga, there's so much of vaporware or stuff like the Bodega Bay that were releasing like tiny numbers, you know, and so you didn't see all that stuff. Now, you guys are, would you, are you guys leaving back, heading back up on Sunday, or y'all sticking around until Monday? Sun, Sunday, Sunday, yeah. Sunday. You know, one thing I want to ask you about, you've always, we always, uh, I, told, I told Bo, I was like, Laurent is our conscience. <laughs> He's always the conscience of the show. I call it that over and over. And whenever I say your name, I give him one of these, because I'm always thinking to myself that he's a strict man. You know, because you know, you don't put up with any of our various uh, pirating ways. Uh, so, have you, uh, this is just, a, you're a straight, you don't pirate stuff, but you're against no. it? I, I do pirate. But I mean, you're not, you get on us all the time though, you're back in the uh, day, not so much now, but hmm. you, you sort of have to, but I mean, it's a different era now, because it's so old, right? But I mean, you were pretty, you were pretty, you were pretty well, saw, uh, you talk a lot about this on Discord, about your beliefs, about this stuff. Uh, uh, do you work? I don't know what you do for a living. Do you work in like the software industry? Do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a game developer. So yeah, so there I, you go. And so this explains yeah. why you're so. But see, the, I tell Boat all the time. This. I tell a lot of people. I say, you know, we're all dirty, filthy, stinking pirates. You got to put things in perspective. And I'll tell you, so doing this show, I've talked to a lot of the game authors and stuff, and the guys that work for stuff. You know, I mean, I love Lionheart, for example. That Lionheart hackers and pirates killed. They killed Thalia. They killed him dead. They were done. So you got to bear a little, a little responsibility. I don't feel that bad being here in America, but we couldn't buy anything. But still, we didn't know that at the time. We just thought we were getting free stuff. So that, I always like it when I always liked having you around because I thought to myself, this, this is the one honest man. No, uh, the, the one honest guy that we've got that I know for sure it's a straight up dude. And so that's, in my mind, that's that's you. I expect you to come in here in a suit and tie, <laughs> you know, maybe with a yardstick, You're way to whack somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great that you came down. I appreciate it so much. It's been a pleasure meeting you. I hope you're having a good time this week. Yeah, I'm having a good time. And I hope, we, I hope you see some stuff that is interesting to you. And hopefully we'll get you back down again uh, sometime in the future. For sure. Everybody, Laron Drew, give it up for him. Great guy. It's good to meet you, Laron. Good to meet you. Thank you very much great. for sitting Thank here with me. I Thank appreciate you guys. it. And I'm going to go grab your buddy over here and get him a pencil. Come on over here. Let's see if you can pop Laron here. Good luck. Hi. <laughs> this guy's like, he's got charisma to beat the band. I thought you said you were soft spoken. <laughs> Come on in here, man. Thank you, Leron. I, uh. Get in here, man. Let's have a chat. Yes, sir. Look here, buddy. It's a good buddy. Hey, so how are you doing today, my friend? I am excited. Talk about your name and where you're from. Get that out of the way. I'm Christopher Petzl. Right here. Uh, I go by Petzl because there are a lot of Christophers. That's right, but there are no Petzls. <laughs> there, there are very few Petzls. Yeah, very few. Uh, and now you're, you're, are you in Indiana? Or yes, Illinois? living remember. in Indiana. So you haven't moved since last time you were down. You were talking about moving, but you didn't get to go. Yeah, when I was here before, I had a, got a job offer while I was here. I took the job for three weeks, kind of felt bad, didn't like the CEO. Well, I'll probably watch what I say here. Didn't. <laughs> You're gonna bury this guy. You'll never work for him again. Well, I will not be working for him. Well, I still do technically, actually. Oh man, don't bury him. But um, 
No, I, I, I needed to go back to where I, I felt bad about leaving where I left, so right, I went back right. to that. You got, but you guys never moved out of here. We, we never moved out, That's but we good. were talking about... It's a shame because we were love, we'd love to have you down here. We were hoping that it you It would have been awesome because it was a remote job and I could have lived anywhere. And well, what are you going to do? Hey, you're so I moved you're, to Hurricane? That would be awesome. You're a young man. You know what could happen? <laughs> yeah. Could happen. I'm two years younger than you, apparently. Well, well, that shot that, didn't it? Don't tell nobody. Yeah. Now, you, you've been here the last couple of years, and you're back again. Now, first of all, what did you bring up with you this year? And last year, you had the video toaster set up with all the trimmings. What are you, what's in the bag of tricks this time around? I brought the Naboo. The Naboo up here. Now, the we Naboo. saw... We saw, uh, we had a brief glimpse, which I got a brief glimpse last year when Josh brought one up here. Now, is this the same model he had? It's a whole different Yes, ball game. it's the same model. Yeah. Uh, it's almost a different ball game because the Naboo is uh, is kind of like a shell for what, what you're going to do. So, it's a Z80 processor. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. It's an A, it's a general, whatever, A, it's a common sound chip. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's a Texas Instruments video chip. I don't remember the... Is that a Yamaha in it? Is that what it is? It's, it's not... I, I, I don't think so. Uh, uh, um, but it's very MSX-like. Yeah. But it actually predates the MSX standard. Yeah. So uh, just kind of a happy coincidence that, that it's very MSX-like. Um, so in uh, 1983, this computer was developed. Um, the Ottawa Cable System in 1984 started offering uh, this, so, so why cable? I guess we have to establish that. Um, you, you got the Naboo, which had no operating system or anything like that other than to load something. Yeah. And so you had this cable modem that was the same, literally like the same box as the Naboo, just a second one. It connected the cable system, and then the cable system transmitted all of this data. Mm -hmm. And so you would have you would say, oh, I want to do this, and then when the, that, sys that data was transfer transmitted, which was a, a quick cycle of data, um, you would load that up on your Naboo. Hmm. And uh, I, I'm usually it's in front of the Naboo. System, yeah. yeah. This is a speech you give as the people walk. Right, right. yeah, so that I can say, and this is what the uh, what I'm it looked gonna, like I'm in 1984. Okay. Now, it, of course, a year has passed. Is this, was this a, your, the new hotness for you this year? Is this what you've been tooling with? Or cause I, were you pulling, tooling around with this before? Or? So I was tooling around with it before yeah. uh, a little bit. Um, I, I jumped on the bandwagon of, of getting the Naboo. There were about 2,200 available, uh, well, not necessarily available, but uh, they were actually stored in a barn in Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, and, um, for right, exactly, yeah. for like 30 years. Yeah. And when they had to get out of that barn, um, um, the David Pellegrini, I think is his name, uh, started selling these. And uh, at first I'm like, well, that's silly. Why would you buy a computer that has no operating system and has nothing to support it? Right. Well, people did. Uh, Adrian Black did a video on this. Yes. And, and I guess there are like... It was over the new hot. Right, quick. right. Yeah. 500 of these sold right away. Yeah. Um, but what really became interesting is that uh, D DJ Schurz, who is, I guess, the, the son and nephew of some of the, the original Naboo uh, uh, founders of the company, um, working with Leo Benkowski, if Man. I said his name right. He's pulling these names out of nowhere. Yeah, I, I, I normally have them. notes for this. Yeah. Um, but they worked together to bring back that experience from uh, the Naboo on the cable systems. Yeah. And... So it was the end of uh, 2022, early 20, 2023, when they uh, released RetroNet um, and the internet adapter. So the internet adapter is software that runs in Windows, runs in Linux, or runs on a Mac uh, that allows you to connect your Naboo computer to the internet, and then they provide the back-end server for uh, what would be the cable system. So, um, so one of your options is to connect to uh, the uh, Naboo network, which was the original cable experience. That's an option. Then there's a lot of new stuff as well. Um, one of the options is you can chat with ChatGPT, uh, which is always fun That's from a crazy. computer, on yeah. a Z80 computer. Yeah. Um, you, uh, there's a lot of MSX game ports. There's an active development or an active community of uh, several developers who are uh, converting those uh, from MSX um, and working on different software to, to make that even easier to do. And so that's all available from, 
from RetroNet, which is the uh, the back end for the Naboo. Um, some of the more recent development is the ability to download everything from RetroNet and run it without actually being connected to the internet. So when I first got here today, uh, before I turned the hotspot on on my phone, um, I was and last night I was just running off of the uh, SD card in a Raspberry Pi. That's crazy. That's the community's really jumped up onto this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's I mean, this had, it's funny when this happens, and you see sort of the same way, like say your Fuji nets and whatnot, where you get it takes the community just to get behind a little something, and then and it makes something wonderful come out of it. Just like just like uh, keeping consoles online or long dorm and whatnot, and the Naboo's a particularly odd duck, <laughs> given the fact that it's like I said until a few years ago. You're right. The video, the black and never heard of this thing. And right. It, and suddenly I heard about it all the time. I'm like, my God, where did this come from? And you know, it's amazing now. And then now it's, and I guess they sold a ton of these things. And probably all of them. Because everyone bought them, it seems like. I, I, I would like to know how many are left. Um, yeah. Uh, Pellegrini is still uh, uh, releasing some, but like I, I kind of watch his listing on eBay. They were cheap, um, too, weren't they? They were really at the time. So, um, it started out, from what I understand, started out selling them for $20 on Craigslist. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> and then went bucks. to selling them on eBay for $60. Yeah. I bought mine for $80. Um, $120 at one point, and some of the most recent that he sold, which were kind of some special units, low serial number units that he had uh, restored, <laughs> yeah. were I think maybe around $180. That's still um, So one of the guys in my local club bought one of those. Um, yeah. Several of the people I know uh, from the various clubs and organizations I'm in have bought Naboo's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. Hey, let me ask you, switching gears here, and you brought your wife with you again this year. Yes. I always like to talk about your wife. She's a nice lady, very uh, long-suffering lady. <laughs> yeah, she put is. up with your eccentricities. Yes, she now, does. I haven't seen her today, so I'm assuming she's out running the road somewhere. What's well, she doing? Well, we uh, we learned how to put Uber on her phone. Oh no! <laughs> and so she's out running around, and we'll so see what my credit card bill says. Because Flax's wife took an Uber last night, <laughs> and I didn't know we had Uber. And this, I didn't never seen my take <laughs> one in her again. So the fact, did you know that we had people at Uber ran around here? Did you know Uber ran around here? Uber? I never had any idea. Did you know? These are the local boys here. They, did you know that people, you could get an Uber in Oregon? Yeah, you know, so she just went shopping or something, eh? She was going to get her hair done and uh -huh. then changed her mind. And went to the pool. She really likes uh, the the pool, she the wave, wave pool. pool. Yeah. We're picnicking up there on Sunday. Oh, is that where we're, we're going to be? Great. Right there. We're gonna, we're gonna She'll like that. Um, I brought my swimming trunk. There so. you go. You're in. Now, let me ask you, <laughs> computers aside, how's everything been the last year? We had a good time. Everything going well. You know, you picked up any, aside from the Nebu, any interesting pickups in the last year? You always, you got a good eye for stuff, but I'm sure you, she has to stop you from buying everything. I, I have tr I have not bought anything because I still have things like I bought the Tandy 1000 last year here. Yeah. Haven't turned it on. Um, I did actually get something. Uh, I'm not gonna get on you for that. At uh, <laughs> Southeast Michigan Vintage Computer Club, I bought uh, a Commodore 128 from yeah. Adam. Yeah. And um, I haven't turned that on either. So I, I kind of think maybe I should turn some things on before I buy anymore, but I am prepared to buy things today. I bought that ST last year and haven't, turned, haven't even taken it out of the box. <laughs> I'm so sad to say, you know, because, you know, we do this Atari ST show. I'm like, man, as soon as I find something I can really get into, I'm going to rip that stuff. And I'm so far, it's been a broke year for the Atari ST, you know, but. Uh, My year has definitely been a Naboo year. Yeah. Uh, I have worked on kind of trying to make the Naboo stand alone. Yeah. Um, it, it, things have changed so rapidly with the internet adapter that some of the plans that I had worked on and developed no longer are relevant. Yeah. Like uh, worked out a way to uh, uh, change the Wi-Fi without, uh, you know, actually having to have um, a screen with a Raspberry Pi because we're running, a, running the internet adapter on a Raspberry Pi was what uh. I'm talking about. Um, that's not relevant anymore because now you have the option to just download everything. 
So, uh, well, listen, you'd rather have it go quick than go slow, that's for sure. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's funny, I haven't been in a meeting for so long where you sat there and nothing happened <laughs> for like decades, and all of a sudden here it comes, and now it's fast forward motion. So, I'm anxious to see what uh, what you've got over there, because I haven't got to look at it yet, and I'm anxious to see what they come up with. I can't even look at these Naboos, though, because I'm afraid I'm going to get one. This one's in, one is in the auction. No, I'm not. Don't you do that <laughs> to me. I've sold several. I feel like I should be getting commission. Well, because I've shown them, and uh, I, I think uh, I'm thinking of three people um, that have at least in part uh, bought it because of me showing them. Well, something tells me you probably sold a few more uh, this weekend, and I'm sure the auction one. Who knows? The auction's pretty wild. You never know what's going to go high and what's going to go low. Right. So I don't know about that. One. Well, listen, I'm looking forward to catching up with your wife too, when she's wife is in town. So hopefully she can come over to the picnic sun Sunday. Oh yeah, she'll okay. be there. Right. Good talking to you, Pets. Thanks for coming down. I hope you have a good time down here. And uh, we always love it when you come around. And by the way, FYI, we still want to hit up that Pinball Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. Pinball Museum down in Corbin. So I'm gonna, you're still on the hook for that. Okay. Because my kids have been driving me nuts when they go back <laughs> down there. I'm like, listen, let me get past Boat Fest and we'll go yeah. down. So you're on the hook. Thanks a lot, man. Great talking good to, to you. you. Thank you. Pets, everybody. Give them a big hand. Always a fun guy. Always just to get the look at that. The crowd actually gave you a hand. <laughs> Love it. There you go. There you go. Hey, hey, Matt. Hey, John. Can you, you, you guys are local guys. Come over here. I want to talk to you real quick. Come on. Come and get a. So we scooch together. Yeah. What's wrong? Nothing. I was going to introduce you to somebody. Introduce me. Who is it? Dave? Come on in, get on in. Dude, get in here, crowd in. No. Oh. Hey, how's it going? It's a great to meet you. I feel like I know you. I'm so sorry for you then. I'm not as bad as I sound. I'm glad you made it, man. Listen, I'm going to talk to you in a little bit. We're doing some quick interviews. So if you'll, you'll sit down with me, we'll get, we'll get some words and get settled in, look around. It's great to see you, man. That's awesome, dude. Hey, Zilly, everybody. Listen, grab, a, grab that mic there. You guys can kind of pass it back. Because I want to talk to you. Scoot, down, scoot over this way a little bit. Yeah, man. I don't want to go that way. <laughs> we got room. Come on. I want to get the local guys in because for the local flavor. Now, first of all, introduce yourselves real quick, everybody. I'm John Marshall. I'm from Charleston, West Virginia. Yeah. I'm TSI Matt. I'm from about a block from here. Yeah. <laughs> you, you travel the shortest to get here, that's for sure. Yeah. Now. And I'm the latest. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. <laughs> well, listen, you, Brent is not, I don't know where he went. So he I went think, to lunch. Oh, yeah. Boy, boy there's a shocker. <laughs> He's always ham and egg it. Anyways, thanks you both for coming. You guys have been every one of these things, I would say, because we got our local supporters here to come down and help Absolutely. us out. Now, you both brought something this year, and you I don't think you've ever brought anything, have you? Not, and then you brought something special as well. So why don't you tell everybody what you brought down here, uh, Matt? I uh, brought a uh, 386 SX that I finally got up and running. <laughs> no, it's a special deal on this thing. Where did you get this thing? I actually got it back probably when I was in high school. At, uh, my neighbors at the time ran an auction house, and I actually got it through that. <laughs> And, but it's branded in an AT and T. It's, a, it's an AT and T. Yes. So what was this? What was this used for as a as a three eighty six? What was this at an office or what was? It? Best guess is it was at an office. Yes. This thing has a great key. What's the name? Do you remember the number of that keyboard? It's one of the top shelf keyboards that I IBM made. But it's, it's branded with that the AT and T yeah. logo on it. And now you had trouble getting this thing up and running. What was the what was the problem? I vaguely recall the RTC chip. The battery died. Of the battery, right? The battery. Now, how did you come across the one to fix it? Uh, a big thanks to uh, Paco. Don't you, not that guy. <laughs> of, all, of all people, yeah. <laughs> he uh, turned me on to a uh, chip that actually replaces it that has a has a battery. And so now it's up and running. What? Did you, so were the original files on that thing? They were, but then I got it up and running, and the hard drive died. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So what's over there now? Did you put a new drive in? Yeah, it yeah. Thankfully, uh, Chad frazzled one. Uh huh. This quarter, folks, uh, had a another drive that was actually significantly larger, and it worked in it. So I that's got it dandy. Back. What what uh, what OS do you have on there? Uh, DOS six. DOS six. I yeah. thought. Did you did I see Windows three loading up on it? Windows three eleven's on it, but it for some reason it isn't stable. 
it's just because it's, it was no good. Yeah. The first thing I did when I went those tree logged on logged up was exit the DOS every time. <laughs> Get that thing out of here. You know what I mean? So are there, are there any games or anything on this thing? What do you plan on doing? Oh, yeah. This thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, you put some stuff on there. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. I've got some pinball on there. I think you like that. It's it makes me happy to see that you. Matt, TSI Matt, <laughs> modern gaming Matt. Now he's getting on board because you've been here every year, oh, yeah. and, and you, I think, you've enjoyed it. But I'm like, yeah. man, now he's in because once Through you bring osmosis, a computer, and I figure I do more than to stare lovingly at the camera. Yeah. Thank you for my, for that. <laughs> 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 well, it's just I, I just sound like my poor Matt. He's got to have something to do. <laughs> now, so you're so you know, it says a 386 SX. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah. Man. 16 mega. I remember when the 386s came out. 2 mega RAM. The 286s are around forever, and I remember thinking to myself, my God, what an update this is. So magnificent. <laughs> and really, it's a baby step before you get to a 486. Right, right. But still, and, Which and, I think it's what Josh has. But. That's awesome. That's awesome. So now, you, of course, live right down the street. Right. Uh, so it's easy as pie for you to get over here. Uh, and you also took the boys on a trip yesterday. You guys went I out did. to the Air Force Museum mm -hmm. and, and, and did some uh, did some touring out there. How did, what did you think? It's your first time out. Yeah, yeah, it was my first time there. I really enjoyed it. What it was, was the thing you enjoyed the most out there? Uh, getting to see the SR-71 That's what he said. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. You guys just sat there and uh, drooled over it. I, uh, back when I was a kid, and actually I've got it on this computer, I had yeah. the Chuck Yeager air flight trainer thing. Oh, yeah. And that was my favorite plane on there. You, oh my <laughs> so again, God. I see one in person. Yeah. Do, do you remember this PC you've got here? So this was your PC as a kid. The actual, so you, all the games on stuff, you could put the stuff you were playing as a kid on there. Oh, yeah. Aside from that one, what, do you, what, would you, what were you into? Simulators mostly? Or? Yeah, yeah, I had it and I had test drive. Oh, uh, yeah. I like the duel. That was my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, uh, have you have you have you looked around? Have you got a chance to walk around much and see all the exhibits? A little bit cool? here and there. Have you seen anything over there on the auction table? Are you now? Are you going to become a full fledged retro gamer? <laughs> Fill your I house full that. of garbage? <laughs> I don't know about that. You need a Naboo, I think. And I think you, you put one. He's got plenty of room was, over there. I'm it's, curious about the thing because I remember after uh, Petzl brought his last. Year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. I'm so happy you've got a computer into this year. I can't wait to go see it. I, I didn't realize it was your childhood computer, so I'm going to go check that out. Well, I mean, it's not my childhood computer, but we had, we had a 286 when I was a So kid. you had an even crappier, yeah. older yeah. computer. Yeah. So this for you, it's an upgrade. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> now, we it's funny. I'm going to, I'm going to pa pass the thing over to John right. here. You're going to, you're going to love this. Uh, Scoot just went a little bit more. I'm going to get John a little bit. No, that's good. Now, John, we just went to my house. To, uh, to pick some cables up. Those cables work. By the way, you haven't had it hooked up yet. You need a power cable. It's not hooked up yet. We'll, yeah. get, we'll get one. And I need one more cable. Oh, no. Yeah. What is it? What cable do you need? Maybe I can help. Well, I need an eighth inch to RCA. Oh. I thought, I, I thought, I thought, I thought that, that one didn't work. Uh, I needed two. Oh, my God. Yeah, You're I forgot. Killing me. Yeah, I forgot I needed We'll worry about that later. Yeah. John Marshall is another of our good buddies, and we met, and he just was just right up the road to Charleston. Uh, how did you come across finding us? I, mean, I never, don't think I've ever asked you that. Uh, my buddy Jason Young found your all's podcast and uh, said that I'd like it. Yeah. He recommended it to me, and I started listening. And I uh, heard Boat say that you all were, were out of the basement of uh, his house at Herc in West Virginia. Yeah. And uh, I was shocked. How long was in before that you close. heard that? Was it right away? Or was it like several episodes in? Uh, several episodes in. Yeah. So I think I was on episode five when I started or something like that. <laughs> that would be a shock. Yeah. We're off, but they're right down the road. Yeah. And then, uh, how did you finally contact that? I can't remember. Did you just emailed somebody or something like that? Uh, got on the uh, uh, forums and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. Guys. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's uh, that you're really the first local person that we met. Yeah. That were you know that from the show, and then you've been we've been hanging out ever since. Yeah. Now you're you're a big Commodore guy, mm -hmm. and you're also a big music guy. And you're also a big telescope guy. Yeah. Give us a little taste of everything. What your music? What are you doing musically these days? Uh, musically, uh, I like doing ambient music. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of like movie soundtrack type music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's uh, my main focus. Uh, also like uh, synth wave music. Uh, that's I like something that I found yeah. more recently. You know. Uh, and then as far as the telescope stuff's concerned, uh, I've got. Uh, I think about eight telescopes now, something like that. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so I'm a collector as well as a uh, as telescope enthusiast. My gosh, you've got so you've got a bunch of different collections, and you've got a bunch of different collections that cause you to take up enormous amounts of space in your home. Yeah, yeah, right out of space. <laughs> You're gonna have to get a big house. Yeah. Now, Last year when you were here, you uh, maybe two years, I know at least one year, you were piecing together a, a new Amiga, right? Yeah. Uh, how's that coming along? Uh, got tell tell me what exactly you were doing. It's an Amiga 4000 project, uh, starting with the uh, ASIL board. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't, uh, haven't started on the project yet, yet I've got all the uh, parts for it, pretty much. Uh, I've got a few little things, like some uh, PLAs that i got to get for it. But, so it's uh, a work in progress. Then. Yeah, exactly. Now, what did you bring to the show here that, we're, that we need to cable up? Uh, I brought a, uh, a Commodore 64 that's been modded with the uh, Messiah cartridge uh, and the uh, SID to SID chip, which lets you add an additional SID and uh, turns it into a six channel stereo synthesizer. Yes, and I've heard this and it's awesome. Remember we yeah. got it working at one of the uh, uh, one of the classic, uh, yeah. you know, Tate's Valley Classic Computer Club. Mm. It's quite a treat. Yeah. Once you find all the uh, all the various cabling, yeah. this thing requires more cables than a space shuttle. You have to have every <laughs> sort of cable to put this thing together. Hopefully we're gonna hit, get to hear some action on this thing yeah. before all, it's all said and done. It's got a sequencer, a drum machine, a bass machine. Uh, and a live playing mode, yeah. So you can play the synth sounds uh, just uh, as a lead, something like that. Very good. You know, here's a question for both of you. You're both two of the rare members of the Tate's Valley Classic Computer Club. <laughs> Is this the worst That's computer thing. club that has ever existed? <laughs> no. <laughs> because no. We have meetings every four or five months randomly in both basement. Yeah. Both eats until they physically can't walk. <laughs> and it screams at us if we try to work on a computer. Yeah. <laughs> it's the strangest computer club ever. <laughs> you know? But it's, we always have a good time because it, 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 uh, Boat's wife fixes the food. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll keep coming to these meetings. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that's enough. But I mean, Pretty are we the sure. most impotent? Computer club that, it, in fact, we don't fix things, we actually blow stuff up on stream. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. We're the worst. We're the worst computer club around. So if you're local to us here in Taste Valley, we do have meetings. If you feel froggy or want to get laughed, you can come out and join us. But uh, it's, a, it's an ugly situation. ICC is a much more lucrative bunch. Yeah. Now, one last thing. You're the lone, I think you're the lone uh, uh, representative currently in here. I think it's Ken O'Rom of the TSI crew, the Team Speaker regulars, for who every, I mean, religiously, they stream every Saturday night. Every week, they never miss. And what is the TSI crew playing right now? Honestly, I have no idea. I haven't been on there in a while. <laughs> this is their only representative. This tells me the TSI crew, crew needs to regroup. Yeah. What, because this That's my last fault. Year. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> not, yeah, you need to stream because no one else can do it. Yeah. In case you're interested, uh, go to TSI, the Team Speaker Regulars, on Twitch and and uh, follow them. And they do occasionally put out a show. We did play a lot of uh, we played a lot of Cedar of Heroes there for a while. Yeah. yeah. Kind of went away. I think they went to Hell Divers too. Yeah. Yeah, and I, 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 I don't play this game. They may be much. playing some Valheim now. See, that's like, another one. That's I can't handle it. I just don't want a, a game where I just walk through the woods going like this. Or chop wood. I can chop wood in real life. I'm going to do that, you know. <laughs> so you got to scramble your boys. I just got a hat while we were doing this interview called me. I got to call him back. The other representative of the TSI crew. Yeah, yeah. So maybe he'll come by today and I'll grill him. Yeah, there he's you gonna go. Come. Hey, listen. Thank you guys for coming and supporting us. Thanks for talking to me. Give me some love here. Good to see you, Matt. Oh, yeah. And uh, we will uh, let you guys get back to it. Thanks, fellas. I appreciate it. That's TSI, Matt, and John Marsh, everybody. Give it up for him. Yeah. Look, you, he, Leron is there to provide like, to the studio audience. <laughs> Thank you for it. Thanks, fellas. Hey, Retro. Retro. Ray, you. You, Retro. Hey, kick him in the face. You, come here. Come get on TV. Yeah. we got to shoot this stuff. We gotta talk. I gotta talk to everybody. I wanna see everybody. Come on in here, man. Get you some here, mic up. We haven't chatted this year. We're gonna have a chat, man. Sure, sure. Come on in here. Clip your mic on. You clip it on. Oh, okay. Uh, I can do that. Hey, everybody. Is that back again? We're streaming, by the way. All your fans are up here on the thing here. Now, listen, as I tell everybody here, 
Tell everybody your name and where you're from. Okay, so I'm, I'm Scott Parklow. Uh, retro I do, I do Dream Retro State. Dream State. That's yep. Retro Dream State. That's right. And uh, I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. I don't know. I can't even remember anybody's real name. Oh, I. Real names are for suckers. Well, that's what I was going to say. We don't, we don't ever have them on there. So it's like, well, okay, if I just put my name, nobody's ever going to know who the heck I am. Right, so. right, right, right. Now, this is, you're back again this year. We're happy to see you. What have you been up to in the past year from the retro side of things? What have you been, you been collecting things oh. special? I believe, don't stop me if I'm wrong. Did you bring last year, did you bring the TI and the, and the Atom, I right? Did. Those were yours. And I believe you had the Atom. Did you have the Fujinet on that? And you had the multi card on the TI. Is that right? I, I did. That did. Can you believe that? Can you remember that? I know, I know. It's, that it's pretty funny. So what have, what's been uh, tickling your fancy this year? Um, honestly, I've been... I, I, I got kind of motivated to start continuing to pick up more uh, retro and 8-bit systems. So I, I picked up, a, and I finally got an MSX2. That's, I got one too. Oh, did you, yeah, yeah, I was just like, I've been dying to get one of those. Have you enjoyed it so far? Yeah. Did you yeah, get the I car, really... the RAM, the stuff? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. Yeah. Well, and I got it out of, um, it's the second time I've gotten a system out of uh, the Middle East. Um, oh, you got one of those too? One of the, the Arabic ones? It was the MSX1 over there that's the it, Arabic it's one. The, yeah, it's the MSX2 version of that same, was it CR or something Does like that? Does it have a screen on it like that? Mm -hmm. I, I think no, no, they no. phased those out for the MSX1, yeah. But it, it does have the, the, the 128, 128, which was kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. It's really basically a, a Yamaha sure. uh, rebrand. So that's kind of nice. And then, honestly, lately, um, I, I just all of a sudden got a big kick. And I, I've got a, I picked up and uh, been refurbishing a 7800, Atari 7800 and a 5200. And, uh, oh, man. I've got a 5200 at the house. I've never powered it on once. It's just this big monolith of my failure that sits in the corner of my room. It's so big and unyielding, and the joystick sucks so bad. It's got that weird power gimmick where you have the hooks on the TV. They're scary. You're going to blow up your TV. You don't know. I know. You know? And the 7800, I do love that. I do have a couple of those. The, the 7800 doesn't get enough love because it actually is pretty playable. Boat's a big fan of those, too. 7800, we love those always. Yeah. The, and the thing is, it's backwards compatible, you know. It's just, they, they, Atari sort of dropped the ball in that sound. You know, but they planned on putting them in the cartridge, and it just didn't happen. Because the cartridge, you know, was a Commando, and I think Ball Blazer have that extra chip. They sound good, you know. Well, the Commando I got that, sounds real good. I got that back bit. Uh, I'm going one of those okay. I tried it yet, And with so. the 7800, you know, she does, she puts the pokey chip emulator in it. Oh, yeah? So you can actually hear that stuff. So it's not, again, not a lot of games, but it really just needs to be able yeah. to hear it yeah, and yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff. And uh, yeah, the 5200, I, I, I completely redid the controller and stuff, and so it now oh, works 100% like new, and it and it really shows me just how terrible it was. I mean, I, I, I have a hard time enjoying it, to be honest. <laughs> I, have, I have a 5200, two crappy sticks, and a, a pile of cartridges. Yeah. I've never had it on one time, but because I got them for practically nothing. Well, of course. Of and course. they're so large, too. Atari... I mean, I could see, you know, they were torture in the right place, and they tried, they saw what the other guys were doing right. with those controllers. They put the, the numeric pad on there, and the analog, and they, and paws was on there. They tried to pr oh. reduce the amount of wires. You could see what they were doing, but everything was just, like, it just didn't work. And they really cheaped out on the joystick at the end of the day. I've read that they had much better joysticks they could have afforded, but they, they didn't get them. They put the cheapos on there. And when you put cheap joysticks on it, you're done. I mean, whatever. Well, the design, even with it completely modernized, it's still a bad design. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. really what it comes down you know, to. But, so. And the 7800, the controller's not are also crappy. Uh, but the, the, if you get, if, I don't have them, but I've seen the pads look good. Yeah. But I don't have the pads. I've got the crappy joystick. <laughs> of course, I just take mine out and I unplug their pad real quick and just stick in another one. And I'm like, that's what most games, do. Most games, if you only need one button, you're good to go. Now, you came in from Knoxville. Any trouble getting up here today? It's a pretty day outside, you know. No, really. I mean, other than other than just the drive, it's four and a half, five hours. Yeah. But it really, no, no problems. And, um, yeah, easy drive up. And, you know, just fun getting to kind of get to see everybody again. And it doesn't seem like it's been a year, I'll put it that way. Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe. It's not. It is. What, what I like, but it's just like you, you already know pretty much everybody. You come in, you, you say hi to everybody, you know them. They're, they're off. Everybody's chill and cool and friendly. And it makes it a lot easier. 
And I think that's part of the reason why people come out from, you know, no one wants to go somewhere and just kind of sit around and be bored and don't talk to anybody. You know, and you always know you're going to see some cool stuff. Have you seen anything on the floor that you find interesting so far? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, just getting to see... You know some of the variations on like the the C64s that people have. I've seen a couple yeah. different weird variations that were fun. Oh, the the, the guys playing the Odyssey One. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, what a fun. I mean, that's gotten to really be crazy expensive yeah. and it's really old at this point, so it's yeah. hard to find one. That's that that's, was pretty. That's neat. the first time I'd ever touched an Odyssey yeah. One. I played it last night. His son whooped my brain out with <laughs> that because he was English and that ball, man, that English is brutal. You can't. You have no chance on that. I've got Odyssey too, and but so this it's nice to see something that predates me. It makes me happy. Exactly. You know, including the TV. Those TVs were that's what everyone had except for oh. wheels. Ours, none of them had wheels. And uh, I mean, when you bring the full TV, that was a nice touch. Oh, absolutely. That's exactly what it would have looked like in the living room. And the and, overlay uh, that sits on that thing. Because I never had a game anything like that that had overlays outside the Vectrix. You know, and so it's, it's neat to see that unfurl on the screen. And if you look, I don't know, did he show you the box or this thing? If you look in the box, it's got all sorts of crazy overlays, and there's uh, there's casino chips, and oh, it's it's like a it's crazy. Like they put everything in this thing. It's like, well, this thing doesn't do much, but we're gonna pretend it does it all, and it, it stuck it all in there. It's quite remarkable. Now I kind of. Why? Well, of course, of course. You know, but, yeah, when you see the price, it it, it scares you. Know, they, are they pretty pricey these days? They've gotten really. I guess the box ones are real super expensive. Well, too. I mean, just getting one that works. I mean, I think I think the last time I looked, they were over six hundred. Oh, geez. and uh, you know, because I did the same thing. I've got my Odyssey two. I really got it all nice and working and stuff. I thought, well, Odyssey one would be fun, and uh, yeah. no, I, it's not going to be that fun. So no. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can luck into one, sure, but like I've got an old con system, like Atari or. or yeah. No, it's a Radio Shack knockoff, but I mean, it ain't the same. You know? no. It's like that Sega with the gun. It's not like if, if you can right. see it, you get it. You're like, I'm not going to get that. It's got the gun. It's cool looking, but I mean, all the other variants are not that exciting, you know? Yeah. I mean, if I could get hold of like a grand set or something from the UK, that might be kind of fun, but I don't know how you'd even hook those up to an American TV. I don't really know. So, 2024, we're halfway through it. Uh, do you see yourself, have you looked over the auction items here, have you, are you, and what's going to be, I'm just wondering if you're going to pick yourself up a project today or tomorrow when they do the auction and to take home, because if you looked at the table and saw anything you might be interested in picking up and taking home with you? Well, the biggest gap I have right now are some of the English uh, machines, so yeah. the BBC is interesting, the Electron, I've had it in my uh, my watch list in, uh, in eBay for a while, yeah. but I knew he was bringing one, I was like, good, I'll get to touch it, so yeah. I'll definitely throw a couple dollars that way, and let's see if it goes my way. And that's a, that's a, I played, have you played it yet? Uh, not yet. It plays, I mean, it's a beauty, yeah. it looks great, that one it plays looks great. great, it's just a, it's very nice of uh, Jocko to put that up for auction, it's going to give uh, uh, I think he's going to charity. Like maybe I don't know how he, but uh, I think he's not getting any money when he sells and he talks. You know, it's very generous. Of, yeah, very and generous. Uh, with so many people were generous uh, that sent stuff over, like uh, Scoob sent a ridiculous amount of stuff that they're raffling off. I don't know if you saw stuff in the raffle table. Oh, it looks great over there. And we haven't even dug into David Z's incredible box of insanity. In fact, in fact, when we finish this, we may have to go over and have a look at this thing. So I, I looked at the first level, it was ludicrous. He might have cracked David Z printed out. All these guys that print this stuff just to give away or so. Right. It's always nice. Uh, yeah, there was a bunch of interesting stuff that's been printed for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. so we should, yeah, hopefully, uh, listen, I don't need to have anything else. I was telling the guys earlier, I got to stop. I got to stop. I got to sell stuff, not buy stuff, but there are some things here I would not. I would not push out of bed, if you know what I mean. God, I know exactly what you mean. Well, listen, man, it's been great talking to you. I'm yeah. really glad you came around. It's always a pleasure, and uh, I hope you find something uh, that you can sink your teeth in. And I'm sure next time we see you, you'll have some other crazy projects. Oh, so, you're a lot like me. We bounce around. Not good. There's no end, there's no end to it, and uh, <laughs> and exactly like you said, I not only do I need to get rid of it, but my wife is highly encouraging me to get rid of as much as possible. Yeah, I've heard a lot of wives do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they don't like to hear how much something's worth. Well, look, this is worth so and so now. Well, good, then sell it. You know. And it's like, no, no, no. You hold on to it. It'll be worth more later. Then they know you're lying. She goes, you're never gonna sell it. She said, if you die and I have to get rid of all that stuff, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to go out. Thank you very much. Thank my you friend. very much. Say goodbye to Rent everybody. Good guy. Right. He'll be around. Thanks again, man. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Hey, everybody. Hey, Ken, why don't you swing that camera a little bit toward, tilt it towards a little bit like that. That's it. That's perfect, man. There we you go. Missed your call. It's like this guy did the, 
does a video show or something. Real quick, man, thank you for helping me out today. You're a fine fellow, and you also drove all the boys up to uh, Columbus, which is nice of you to do. Uh, what have you thought so far? You, now that we, uh, some time has passed as we spoke, you having a good time? Oh, yeah. yeah. Good. And uh, <laughs> what do you think about this uh, auction? Are you actually going to bid on anything? I've considered maybe bidding on a thing or two over there. Oh, my God. I can't believe yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Well, surprising. We're dragging you into this kick and stream. I want to get you on here publicly on record and say thank you very much. And also, Chad, your mom. <laughs> there you go. Thank well, you very I much, mean, Matt. I appreciate it, my friend. <laughs> All right. All right, Ken, swap places, my boy. Thank you a whole bunch, man. I really appreciate it. You saved my bacon at least three times today. Get in here, Ken. Let's have a chat, man. Here you go. Look, everybody. It's a real-life celebrity. And a hoser, all at once. Ken. Yes, I'm sitting right beside a real life celebrity. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, yeah, big time. <laughs> now you can see I'm surrounded by all these women. That's why you know that's how you know it's a big time. I get the same thing. Hey, it's good to see you, uh, man, even <laughs> if I had to wear sunglasses. Uh, welcome back this year. Uh, uh, have you enjoyed yourself so far? We're about midway through day two here. Oh, it has been a blast. Very good. <clears throat> Any, anything that uh, caught your fancy? Um, just all the things that I don't have and I want. Hold on a second, let Bo, Bo, go ahead and make your announcement. Bluefest announcement real quick. Uh, if you have an item up for auction and you have not put your name and your what the thing is on this piece of painter's tape and put that on the item, please come up. I'm going to put the painter's tape over there. Please mark everything because we're, we want to make the auction not slow. Thank you, there it was. <clears throat> auction breakdown. So, um, you normally have the worst conceivable trip to everything you do, because you drive from the, I don't know, deep, deep woods somewhere. How was the trip up this year? And how were your, and the bigger question, how were your companions? Did you get sick of these guys year after year? Um, well, this was actually one of the most uneventful trips I've had, other than days and days of driving. So I drove from the West Coast to Central Canada over three days, was there for a day, then hopped on the plane, flew out to see Frank and all of these other Canadian losers, and then uh, we all flew, or we all drove down here. You know, I've noticed that we've sort of got a rising contingent of Coco and TRS-80 people here at Boat Fest, and the numbers are on the rise. What do you attribute the success to? Uh, we're slowly taking over the world. Man. That's a bleak outlook for everyone. I'll be honest with you. Are we, are we all going to be wearing those? No, soon Soon the world is going to be run by Coco 3s. <laughs> oh, man. I think maybe it already is. Oh, there you go. Now, Hello. I want to I talk to you about your channel. Okay. Which I think has grown exponentially since we talked about it last year. What have you, what have you been up to on there? I've been attempting to fix a lot of things. Some of them have even actually fixed. So, um, a lot of Commodores. A lot of Commodores. They're always broken. Um, I've upgraded a couple of uh, Tandy computers. You know, they weren't broken. I just, had, I just upgraded them for fun. What do you got coming up? Any projects you're working on? Um, well, I'm right in the middle of fixing some pets, but because I've moved out to my cabin, I couldn't bring them with me. I didn't have room. So for this summer, I've actually just got my hands on a TRS-80 Model 1, which I am going to be deep diving into, and a bunch of software, all the peripherals. So uh, yeah, I'm going backwards in time. Very good, very good. Well, I, I, I watch your channel every time you put something up. It's always amusing just to see what you're wearing, frankly. <laughs> and then you also talk about stuff, added bonus, you know, so it's a, it's a lot of fun. I think you've had pretty good growth this year, too. It looks yeah. like you're picking up a lot of, and that ain't easy, brother, uh, in 2024 on YouTube to get some action, you know, so it's been nice. Um, I appreciate you coming out this year. Any, any words for your throngs of fans before I cut you loose? Uh, just, uh, hey, come to Boat Fest next year, because it's a blast. Nice. Checks in the mail, Ken. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you being out here, man. All right, thanks.
thank you much. I'm going to de-mic you here. I don't want to, I don't want to touch that shirt. <laughs> yeah, you Not might without a glove. <laughs> you might burn yourself. You know I mean? <laughs> thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. Come on up, man. Let's have a chat. I'm going to get to everybody, man. Just don't make any cartoon references. <laughs> <laughs> I was for an excuse to be on TV. From one, one fluorescent shirt to another. Yeah, there we go. Pop in here, man. All right. Whoops. Let me try that again. Made a very loud noise. Yeah, that was just it. Ram against his groin. It's okay. And I do apologize to whoever's ears I just blew out. <laughs> now listen. First of all, it's a traditional. Tell everyone your name and where you're from. My name is Henry Gernhart, and um, when people ask me where I'm from, I'm like, well, let me put it to you this way. My earliest memories are the Yukon Delta of Alaska, and I did most of my growing up in a little town called Huntington, West Virginia. So sort of a local guy who also had to go to Alaska. Well, I was, I was born in Maryland. Right. You know, and so when I we won't were, hold that against you. I was born uh, in New Jersey. So yeah, I, I won't hold that against you either. Oh, finally, <laughs> one guy. So let me ask you, Henry. Uh, here you are at Boat Fest. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the first time you've been out here. Uh, first of all, how did you find out about it? Uh, and what, did you, what do you think so far? Well, I actually found out about it through the Coco Nation. You know, Say it again? Through the Coco Nation. Oh, yes. You, know, and, you guys um, plugged us on there? Very good. Thank oh, yeah, you. all the time. It was great. And um, I was founded about through that, and I also made, this year, I actually had the wherewithal to be able to make some of the, some events. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this one's in Hurricane. And yes, growing up in West Virginia, growing up in Huntington, I know how to pronounce Hurricane properly. Yeah. You know? The only um, one. <laughs> the only one so far. But, um, and so I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is around where I used to live. It's not quite in Huntington, but hey, and I might be able to find some, some things out about Hurricane that I didn't know before. And while I'm at it, I'll have some fun. Sure, yeah. sure. And what, what do you think so far? So far, it's a so far it's a lot of fun. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad you yeah. enjoyed it so far. Now, have you seen? Have you surveyed everything? Is anything uh, that you thought was interesting? Um, really, the fact that there's a bee right over there on the auction table oh, is yeah. one of the most interesting. And things. there's also an electron over there as well. Yeah, I saw I saw that. And so, they're both gonna go. They'll probably go for a pretty reasonable price. A lot cheaper than you would saw at like Coco Fest. When we went up there, remember how much expensive those British computers that were going for at an astronomical sum? Because mm -hmm. I tried to get one. So you'll probably get, if you're interested in that sort of thing, you'll probably get a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, but Jocko had the Electron out yesterday. We were playing, it was right. great. It oh, was yeah. so good. So yeah. that, listen, an excellent choice. Because <laughs> I'm getting into the BBCs, and I, so I think that's a great choice. Now, normally you're, you're more uh, uh, a TRS-80 mm -hmm. fellow. Like, how long, is this something you grew up with? Is that, is that the, like a lot of us were? Or? My first actual computer, like we're not counting dad's HP 41C, we're not counting the uh, Atari 2600. Right. My first actual computer was a 1981 vintage D-board 4K color computer. And that was before mom got the job with Radio Shack, but oh. not that long afterwards. Mom got the got, mom got a job with Radio Shack, and we pretty much became a Tandy family after that. So she worked for Radio Shack. Yep. Did you get the actual uh, perks from that, like extra goodies or whatnot? I got to play with the machines. That was a big. Every so often, she'd bring one home, you know, something nifty. Um, like I, she brought home a DT1. Oh, at okay. one point in time, that's not a machine. It's like a, a dumb terminal in a Model Three case. Think about it like that. But I was able through that to dial into the Model 16 at the store that was running Xenix, and that was my first experience actually using Unix, and I rather enjoyed the Unix experience. Very good, that's outstanding. So you're a lifer. Now did you move up the line into the Tandy 1000 series as you go down that road? Or? I don't think we actually owned a 1000. Um, we pretty much passed that and went straight to like the 2000 and the 3000. Well, not the 2000, that didn't come home with us either. That was there for a bit playing with it, but the 3000 was the one that I think Dad wound up with, because we kind of skipped from the business and daily use, daily driver machines being the Z80 machines uh, to the PCs, and pretty much skipped right into the AT era. Very good, very good. <clears throat> we actually, we went right through them. Tandy SL, mm -hmm. TL, TL2, I had them all. Uh, before finally I sold it, my TL to get an Amiga. Ah. Actually, so I, I went, I, and I, so it was the conversion was right there. But I, I always enjoyed them, you know. But the Coco is the big dog of that group. I'm right there <laughs> with you, uh, and I love playing with it. Now you, 
you are obviously uh, a follower of the nation, the Coco Nation. We're looking right here at Elk Curtis Boyle here. Right now, if you, if you had to, what would you say to this guy? Cut a promo on him right now. Has he ever wronged you? Just give him the business. He's right there. Oh, yeah. No one will say nothing. Curtis, Curtis, from what I can see, he's an awesome person. What you know, the heck? As, as, as far as I can... Boy, that mud is check cleared today. Well, that's uh, what I can see because, oh. you know, I haven't spent much time <laughs> in person with him. Yeah. But he's always got a good attitude. And it takes someone special to hang on to Nitro's 9 and ease of use for as long as he has. Yeah. And to continue to carry that and plug that and to have that kind of passion. You got to so, admit, it's awesome. And I mean, it's amazing, really. Yeah. You know, I don't want to put you over, but uh, it's quite, oh, but look at that, run in. Yep. Uh, but uh, uh, the Coco, I find the Coco community like inventive, the most creative, the most passionate. I hate to say that. Sorry, everybody well, else, but that's the way here's it is. The, here's the, the thing. Coco community, they're old, they skew older, and they get in there. They love it. Here's the thing with the Coco community. When the VIC-20 came out, it was around the same time that the Coco came out. The VIC-20 had arguably better graphics and definitely better sound than the Coco did. What the Coco had going for it is that it had a real computing processor in it. That's about it. So those of us who went Coco really had to get creative in not only writing the, writing the games for it and making them look good and making them pretty, but also in just what we were doing with it. We didn't just get into the Coco because you could stick a cart port in the side, a cart inside of it. And if that's all you did with it, that's fine. But I remember going to a Coco meetup um, I don't remember what town it was in, but this is probably about, I was about the age of maybe 11 or 12 or something like that. And there were people who would just, I mean, they had tricked out, they had drilled holes in these things. There were extra switches, knobs nah, you know, and dials, all sorts of crazy stuff. People experimented with the Coco like people today experiment with the Arduino, the Raspberry Pi, um, and then some because you not only had games you could write, but you could physically build your own hardware for your custom game if yeah. you wanted to do it that way. It's a, it's the, when I, you know, I've got my hands on a lot of different communities because of what we do, but no one comes out and, and puts out crazier stuff than the Coco community. <laughs> and really, in terms of like knowing the system, there are a few, I mean, there are Europeans and that know a lot about the Amiga and the C64 that are get in there, but the Coco people. For, I mean, they, I tell people the color computers like the the American ZX in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah, very much. I mean, they're not obviously different computers, but and it, a lot of the Europeans have slept on the Coco. Now they're picking it up, so it's nice to see it travel across the pond. Right. You know, get popular. I love it, and I love having more. Coco centric people here. I'm so happy you came down, yeah. Henry, and I hope you'll be back uh, uh, in years to come to visit us, you know, if possible. Uh, if we do these again, I, I guess we probably will somewhere down the line. It's the third time around, you know, now it's, it's, it's gone from being just a lark to an institution. Oh, God. <laughs> It never was a lark for me. Every hey, day you should right you should have heard the guy at the, the guy at the motel I'm at, the motel yeah. six down the road. He's like, why are all my rooms booked? Yeah, you know, like boat fest. Because all the all the classic computer people spent their money on computers. We can't afford to stay at the Ritz, pal. <laughs> the motel six. Hey, thanks a lot for talking. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Friends. My we pleasure. Been enjoy. That's it, everybody. Please check him out. Do you have anything you want to plug before you go? Well, I do have my I do have my YouTube channel. Yes. It's uh, called the Break Key. And actually, if you go to thebreakkey.com, that's all one word, all lowercase, obviously, even though it doesn't matter, but thebreakkey.com, it'll take you directly to my YouTube page, where I've been you know, playing around with uh, the FujiNet device, as well as working on a fourth implementation that is a true operating system for the TRS-80 color computer. Oh, a true one. Yeah, like you can put burn it on a ROM and replace the and replace the basic ROMs oh, with it. Oh wow! And it'll bring the bring the bring the All thing right. up. All right, well check that out, everybody. That sounds awesome. Thanks again, Henry. Appreciate it, man. Very good. Well, Curtis, you might as well come on up too, brother. Third time lucky. This is the Coco portion of the show, everybody. It's always a pleasure to welcome back. <clears throat> The preeminent voice of the car computer, L. Curtis Boyle. Welcome back, Curtis. I'm so glad you came back down this year. I wasn't sure if the, 
the Canadians have got tired of coming to Eric, and so I was happy to see you come back. Are you having a good time so far this year? Yeah, I'm having a great time, uh, just as usual type thing. Look at that. Mobius is walking by us with a plane. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Now, like I mentioned, I've seen some Coco or some TRS-80 people I've never met before. Yep. And a couple guys come over here that are in the, the Model 1. There's a Model 4 over there. Yeah, he's... I told him, I was like, listen, I said, I th I've never see, ever seen one of these in person. Well, the ones I always saw were the ones in the, in the threes, like the ones that were predominantly I saw. And I have to say, it's, I like the look of it. You yeah. Know, it's the first time I've seen one in person. Yeah, when I was uh, in my early 20s, we had a, a house that we rented. There was a four of us, and we ate, all were running BBS. So we had four BBSs coming out of our house. Yeah. And one of them was running on a Model 4P. Really? And mine was running on a Coco, of course. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, in the, uh oh, thank you. People are just giving me money. What's this for, Terry? Greenbacks. Time <laughs> to hit the strip club. Uh, uh, so anyway, getting back to Boat Fest here, you, you you came down with this year with it was you, Jason Warren, Frank, Laron, and Ken. Yep. Five Canadians, and it seems like someone else here might be Canadian. I, uh, I mentioned Lauren. Is there, is there other guys here that didn't come down with you guys from Canada too that I met? Yeah, somebody from BC or something. Like What's it like to just basically see a bunch of your countrymen in the middle of West Virginia? It's got to be a weird feeling. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, Cocoa Fest is like that too. So I'm kind of been used to doing that for yeah. well since 1986. So. Yeah, and, and you know, I didn't get to go to Cocoa Fest. How was it this year? Did you have a good time out there? Yeah, it was good. It was it was bigger than last year. Really? Yeah. And we had the deluxe color computer, you know, the prototype. Oh, that, yes, yeah. I saw the video of that. Now, yeah. what do you, I was talking to uh, Henry, what do you attribute the upswing in popularity here to with the color computer? What's, I mean, every year it's just like I see more and more people getting into it. Well, I think partly it's retro in general is getting an increase, yeah. to be honest. I mean, COVID kind of started that because people kind of hold up. And no, what, hold what are you going to do? Go ahead, Bo. Both press announcement. This is the final call to add items to the Raffle table. We would like to benefit both as 2024 and add any item you'd like to the raffle table. Uh, you can do it. We are going to have our final raffle in 45 minutes at 4 p.m. Thank you, both. Raffle coming. So go ahead. What were you saying? Well, uh, basically, I think retro in general has been increasing, uh, just yeah. from seeing other shows as well. Um, and the fact, and the. In the in the Coco's case, it's because we've had some excitement discovering some like prototypes that we'd never seen before. Like there's been a couple deluxes found before. Oops. Sorry, tickets are still for sale for the raffle. <laughs> <laughs> five for twenty, one for five. Five for twenty, one for five. And again, all the proceeds from the raffle plus the items that are marked for Boat Fest uh, in the auction go solely to uh, keep the ticket price at thirty dollars for next year, no matter how much. We end up having to pay for the video. It's a good angle. Yep. It's a good angle, but uh, I agree. I, you know, it's funny. Red I thought was really on the wane in some ways, but not. There's there are some aspects of it that I think are people are being shut out, and at mostly console level stuff. Yeah. But the it, the eight bits, I think we're just rolling right along because they're still relatively inexpensive. They're getting more, but I mean, you gotta get your Coco 2 pretty cheap. Yeah, getting, Coco 3 on the other hand is getting up Coco, there. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, and the thing is, you can play almost everything on a Coco 2 and be happy. And you can still get one cheap. This isn't like the Amiga where the, the 500's expensive, the 600's expensive. I think the 8 bit sort of, there's a little bit of buffer there where we're not gonna get killed too bad, but I guess eventually, as these things get older, they're gonna get harder and harder to come by. Is anyone working on, like, in the Amiga world, they're working on, like, basically surrogate, new boards yes. and stuff. Is that, is that something that's going on in the Coco world? And the Dragon world, both. Really? And the Dragon as well? Yep. Uh, Karen Anscombe, the guy who did the extra emulator, yeah. is doing a Dragon 64 motherboard replacement. Uh, what the heck said the guy? Now, both name? those computers are off, they were off the, Ju yes. they were just off the shelf parts, right? In, in for for in the most part, yeah. yeah. Julian Brown's doing the Dragon 32 one. Yeah. Back now he's doing the expanded one. And Pedro Pena out of Florida is actually doing Coco 1, 2s, and 3s. Really? Yep. Coco 3s, eh? Yes. He's actually got one done. There's a few already out there. Really? Are these going to be, hand I'm assuming these are all going to be handmade, right? I mean, you're going to have to hand well, no, solder. He's, he's, he's setting them up with the files you can download. You can take them to PCBWay or whatever, get them to manufacture the really? board for it. Yep. Now he's working on, we're going to be working on one to incorporate the Gimme X or Gimme Z or whatever is it you want to call be, it. Is it going to be a, um, is it going to be a challenge? 
to, I mean, the cost, is it going to be cost prohibitive? Are the parts on the Well, not if the Coco 3s keep going up on eBay, it won't be. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> give, give it a year and it'll probably be half price. I paid, a, I paid yeah. 150 bucks a couple years ago for a Coco 3 in a box. You're, you're lucky to get it for 250 to 300 work. now. Well, it didn't work. They said it's broke. I was like, you're still charging 150 bucks because you looked on eBay, you know. So I went home and did what I always do when I buy a broke computer. I reseated all the chips and it worked. Yep. And I've got it stuck in the back room. And I, I'm, now I feel like I'm sitting on gold, solid gold money, because the thing's gone up so much. I'm happy to have them. And I got that one for Boat a few years ago. I felt like I really did, got a, uh, did him proud, because otherwise he'd have been screwed. He yep. loves a Coco, you know? Yep. Now, you all, of course, you were the, uh, the the king dog of Nitrous 9. Any new, uh, any new? of course, we had you on ICC a little while ago, and you sort of went over it. Where's the, what's the direction we're going with that right now? Well, we just released uh, 1.01 in April, yeah. so just a few months ago. Um, I'm kind of taking a break from Nitro 9 for a bit because i got a bunch of other projects I'm working on. I like disassembling the uh, Deluxe Color Basic like ROMs. Maybe your game one of these days getting released? I, well, the game requires I have to do a couple driver changes in Nitro 9 itself, and there's a utility for doing sound I need to do first, and then I'm back to the game. Oh, beautiful. Very so, good. Yeah. So you're gonna, you are going to work back on the game then. Yeah. Outstanding, outstanding. Um, are you... Tandy Assembly. I wanted to ask you about this. I hear about Cocoa Fest all the time. Yep. Have you been down to Tandy Assembly? I have not. It's it's at a bad time of year for me because it's in September and that's my busiest time of the year yeah. for work. Yeah. Now, I'm getting closer and closer to retirement or semi-retirement. No. I'd like, I'd like to think anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I am planning on going out there and I'm actually, I'm, as I talked to Bo and a few others here, I'm actually saving up for a truck and a camper combo in the next two years. So once I have that and I can just like camp on the way and plug in and you know do you work did, remotely. You did talk to Big Rob, get some tips. I did talk to oh, I talked to him for a good half an hour yesterday, yeah. but uh, yeah, I'm planning on once I get that, it's going to make it much cheaper to go to these shows because sure. then I can make take two weeks off and maybe attend two in a row in totally different states or something like that. So very good. I am yeah. planning on getting there within the next couple of years. You being retired, I can feel like a Grateful Dead tour going on. <laughs> just, the never well, people will be grateful. Yeah, they're That's bringing it. you in for every show there is to get you to come in because it's you're the premier Coco master. So, well, listen, it's always great to have you guys come down from Canada, Curtis. It's and great to have you guys at, at oh, Coco Co Co Fest when oh, you get yeah. a chance. I yeah. think me and Britt are going to be coming around the next one, theoretically. If I, can get, I mean, that's going to be a bad trip for me. You think traveling with these guys might be a little rough. Traveling to Chicago with Brent is going to be bad time. That's what the roof rack's for. Oh, man, that's what that's what getting drunk in the car is for, is what that <laughs> is. But it's always great. It's funny that our past cross quite a bit because you and Kim visited one time, and we yep. see you at Coca Fest. We see you here every year. So I see you probably more than I see about any of these guys, the retro guys, which is nice. You and Ken, it's got a couple Canadian bad pennies that keep popping up. But yep. I'm hoping, with any luck, me and Brent will be up there at Coca Fest next year. I promise you, we will not be wearing the the, uh, yeah, the, the wrestling jumpsuits. uniforms or whatever the heck that was. We yeah. won't be wearing those. Those have been retired permanently. Yeah, for those of you who have seen uh, Boat on Camera or Ken on Camera, this is going far beyond even their outfits. So. Yeah, that was a that was a poor choice I made that year. <laughs> you know, I didn't walk in front of all those people. I felt like the world's biggest fool, yeah. and I was the world's biggest fool. I you got a good reaction. Though. People loved that. They were just laughing their oh, asses God. off. Yeah, so. I love it when the crowd laughs at me before I've even started to talk. <laughs> like, get it out of the way early. That's the way I look at it. You know, yeah. then they can just sit there in silence, not deliver my lines. It works out great. Yeah. Uh, thanks again, Curtis. I appreciate you coming over. Yep. We're going to get set up for our good buddy, Rob Flack O'Hara, and Sprite Castle Live. So we're going to put this on hiatus for a minute, everybody. We'll be back in a few minutes, and I will get Rob set up and ready to go. Wave, Curtis. Adios, everybody. And it's uh, early on Sunday morning, Boat Fest 2024. You hear the sounds of John Marshall. Starting to disassemble his uh, the exhibit over here. We're by ourselves in here. Me, John, and today's special guest. It's our good buddy Mobius. What's a good word, Mob? You having a good time? This, uh, oh yeah. Weekend? You brought a uh, as usual. Last year you had that incredible custom job, Amiga. You brought in here with all the beautiful stuff that you manufactured for it. It looked great. It ran great. Great machine. Mm -hmm. and this year you saw. I didn't think you could do it, but you sort of brought something that just blew my mind. Mm. And this incredibly fast Amiga, and I wanted to get you over here so we could talk about it because I only you could really do it justice in terms of what you've done to it and, and what it what the capabilities of it are. So can you kind of go into it a little bit? Um, it was Amiga 4000 with a Cyberstorm. Uh, when I got the Cyberstorm, it didn't work, so I had to send it to Poland to get it fixed by statue. 
And while he had it, he asked if I wanted to upgrade the PPC. So I said yes, so it has a 420 megahertz power PC. Now, you, so you, in some ways you sort of stumbled into this, didn't you? Because I mean, you didn't know it, that could be done or you didn't know your, he would do it when you sent that over? Or did, was that? Oh, I didn't know he could upgrade it, no. So when you heard this, you probably were like, oh God, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> now, how many, how many of these boards do you think are still romping around? And then furthermore, how many do you think have had this modification that yours is? Um, I don't know. Some that was on the International Computer Club meeting said that there were only about 10 cyber storms still running in the U.S., maybe. Yeah. But that doesn't include the blizzards and all that, so I don't know. But I would say, as far uh, as how many have been upgraded right. to 400, I have no idea. I'd say that's, but it makes it incredibly unique at this point. Especially having seen this thing, you know, now. Especially in the U.S. Right, oh yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I guess in Poland, <laughs> it, it, it might be a less unique, but the, I right. the Poles are really hardcore hardware and monitors, right. and they really do it. Well, the, the 4000 also has the uh, mediator card that gives it PCI slots, and that also, or yeah, that also came from Poland. Now, among, aside from the, uh, so that runs at how many megahertz again, exactly, when you have it all fired up? 420. 420. <laughs> Smoking, more I ways can't. than one. And if you saw this, because I mean, he's had the top off, I've got some video of it. When you, when you, when you see it, I mean, it's really quite remarkable. Uh, the, the, all the stuff you've got stuffed inside this box. Yeah, and all the stuffing is the problem because there's not good enough airflow. So. Yeah, well, what else, I'll tell them what else is in this thing except for the upgraded. Um, it's got a DVD-ROM. <laughs> it's got a highway USB card that came with the machine. I already said it had the mediator. Uh, the only way to get RTG without the CyberVision video card for the PPC. Yeah. And the guy who sold it had one of those, but he hasn't been able to find it, so someday maybe I'll be able to get that too. But in order to get RTG, you need the, uh, PC, the mediator to put in a more modern video card, like a Voodoo 3, or in my case, a Radeon 9250. And I'd rather have the Voodoo 3 so that I could run Windows 3.9 with Warp 3D, but Voodoo 3D cards me. are precious. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something, wouldn't it? Yeah. I never even thought of the concept of that. That's yeah. crazy. That's no, no, no. The only reason I have um, Windows OS 4 is because it has the drivers to run Warp 3D yeah. and for Radeon. <clears throat> now, I was watching you play out with Quake, I believe, on this and, and yeah. some of that stuff. It, it was, I mean, it was remarkably, it, it, actually, if you didn't know you were looking at an Amiga, you might just think you were looking at sort of a, a PC from uh, that era. It ran pretty well. I mean, yeah, it's about a Pentium 1 level, I, mean, I would say. Uh, uh, which, I mean, again, if you look at the, the exponential upgrade from the original, it, it makes it more impressive. Now, you said that you've got some uh, heat-related issues. What, what really causes the most heat in that thing? Is it the process or firing up? Um... Or? Probably the power PC chip. Yeah. yeah but the the DVD ROM is too long, so it blocks a lot of the airflow from the yeah. fan. And here at Boat Fest is the first time I've had it turned on for any length of time, yeah. and everything just started slowing down. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it, it's, it was still quite remarkable. You know, I mentioned last year you had the uh, that incredible machine up here. Uh, you already had a couple of incredible machines. You also had that 1,000 up here this year. Um, yeah. My grandmother's 1,000. <laughs> what? I know you, you like, you're one of these guys, I think, that really likes to push stuff and really be creative. Like, is it for you, is it the, destina is it the journey and not the destination? Is that the, you just try to keep going as far Absolutely. as you can? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll spend a year working on a machine, get it up and running, it's great, and then it goes on a shelf and I never touch it again. <laughs> so this one, I'm glad you brought it because this might be on the shelf here soon. Um, <laughs> do you have something down the road that you're looking, what's your next crazy goal? Because, I mean, I really um, think you're two for two on these last couple. Well, that, the one I brought you last year, yeah. the, um, the 500 in the Checkmate case yeah. with the integrated 570 CD-ROM. That was awesome. So yeah. basically a poor man CD TV. Yeah, it, I mean, it looked, you had to see the look of it. It was, I mean, you because you did a lot of custom work on that, yeah. as I recall. Getting the 570 yeah. fitting in there was and, not I mean, it trivial. looked good, <laughs> it looked solid. I couldn't believe how... And you're looking at it, and you're, it's an Amiga, but you're like, what the hell is this? What am I looking at? Well, it's a, it's, it's a Mobius is what it is. Yeah. It's the only one on Earth that's like that. So you're going to get jump back into that then? Um, 
Yeah, I could never get a uh, accelerator to work yeah. with that board revision of 500 and the 570 and an accelerator. So I'm gonna take out the old 57 or the old 500 board, put in a 500 plus board with two megs of chip RAM and oh, yeah. a terrible fire, and then hopefully it will just be the end all be all. <laughs> that would be that's a, that would that's uh, uh, as I as you went through that, I'm like, yes, that sounds great. You know, that would that would that would that would be a, a major. It'd be like upgrade. an ultimate OCS yeah. game machine. That would be a major upgrade. And then also have a Firebird to put in something else. How hard is a it? Firebird that's been sitting on a shelf for over a year. Yeah. How hard, <laughs> how hard is it to get those 500 plus boards? Those weren't roll. Those weren't um, big seller in the states. Like I don't, I don't think I know anybody. Yeah, I had to buy back it. in the day. Yeah, I had to buy it from England, I believe. Yeah, I figured that. So, so that's the way it's got to be import time. Right. Yeah, I understand. So, um, it's funny now. Me and Bobby's the only ones in here. It's funny that uh, to be in here after all the chaos of the last couple of days, like nonstop. Mm, looks action. like there's been a frat party in here. <clears throat> and that there was one. <laughs> there was one late last night. A frat party did break out. Um, mm. Did you, I, you, especially a guy like you that has a real educated eye for this stuff? Did it, was there anything that you saw here uh, over the weekend that really got you know kind of captured your fancy in any way? Um, the Naboo was cool, of course, yeah, yeah. and I never got to play with one of those really old school. The uh, Luckables and the uh, well, the um, all Altair. The, uh, yeah, the Altair. The, the, yeah, you know, the, that you know those two guys, the um, local local fellas. Mm. Which was great. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Up, up in New Orleans, part of the state. But, oh, but the, uh, they had some real nice stuff. The one guy had that. I've never seen one of those TRS-80 Model 4s. Curtis and them have. Of course, but they're all insane. Mm -hmm. but they, you know, <clears throat> by the time those became something that were, you know, around, other things have sort of, like, taken a TRS-80's place. So I've never seen one. And the luggables are always interesting. He, he had them in good shape. And then, the, you're right, the Altair thing, or there was a... That's uh, uh, quite a good looking little unit for what mm -hmm. it is. The fact you had to hook up to the monitors, that was, I found it quite interesting. I didn't even know they could be hooked up to monitors. I, I just thought it was the lights. When you walked over <laughs> and saw the monitors sitting there, did you know that they were connected? Because at first I had no idea. I just thought, yeah. okay, you put it in. Uh, then he's like, let me just load up Zork. I was like, yeah. what? He's like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. I was like, what the heck's happening? <laughs> that was quite impressive. He took that uh, PDP uh, uh, recreation home last night from the auction, too. He was real happy about that, you know. They were real nice guys over yep. here. But the holy grail was that laser. <clears throat> the laser active? Yeah. I had a chance to buy one of those once, and the guy wanted five grand. I'm like, no thanks. Holy smokes, you're yeah, kidding me. Five Gs. He paid almost that much for that one from his friend. Bill is a uh, <laughs> Bill is a big-time collector out of Frankfort, Kentucky, mm -hmm. which I get out there. I've got to, he keeps inviting me out there. i got to get out there because I do work out that way sometimes. A real nice guy. He had a real... He had a diverse uh, setup this year with the Odyssey One and then the. Uh, oh, did he have that too? Yeah, I, I played. Me and Bo went back there and played a game of football in this thing. It was the most crazy thing you ever saw. Uh, but uh, he had a real diverse. He's a real nice guy. Brought that huge TV. That was a clever idea. Yeah. And he said it's the first time he's ever brought anything to any to exhibit anywhere. Yeah. So I wouldn't long lug that TV around, but it's a great TV. It's got <laughs> wheels. That's the best part of it. So you can at least wheel it to the car. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, I. Uh, I thought it was. A, I thought there was some pretty interesting stuff here this year, you know. But it, in terms of raw power, I'd say you probably <laughs> you were yeah. probably the king dong of that. In terms right. of, certainly with the Amigas, I saw a few Amigas here. It's funny, you know. Last year we had a lot more Amiga presses. This year was a much more diverse. Yeah. Know, I saw a little bit of everything, uh, but uh, uh, as usual, you, uh, which of course last year you had probably the best Amigas here too. Uh, this year you were far and away the best thing. And, I admire the fact that you're trying something because I mean, again, you don't really have a blueprint to go by. You're right. talking about installing this OS, and it's like because it can't get drivers for this, and having to figure it out and all stuff. I mean, how hard has it been just to, even once you've got the hardware down to figure out the software situation? Oh, uh, there's there's no support. <sighs> right, that's hardly. What you're you got about right? Hyperion's website, and that's about it. Yeah. Any other thing with Amiga, you have a problem, you Google it, and nine out of ten times, somebody's had that problem and. Tell, yeah. can tell you what to do, but yeah. for OS 4, Final Edition Classic on original hardware, nothing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine how irritating. How many yeah. times have you reinstalled the OS, and how many times have you changed what was on there? I mean, probably a thousand I mean, times. <laughs> well, I never, 
I never could get the OS installed on it. Yeah. I had to do it in WinUEA and set up a whole power PC environment in WinUE, yeah. which yeah. is not easy to do in yeah. itself. Install the OS there and then copy it over. And now I re I, since I've realized that the problem was the uh, graphics card was overheating and crashing during the install. So I had- well, it's, it's just a hiccup in the install. Right. And that's, so. it's been more hardware than software, like yeah. finding an ultra wide SCSI hard drive for that thing. I think I'm on number five yeah. till I bought one new old stock still in the plastic and it's the first one that's worked and been stable. What are those going for now? This uh, new old Oh, it stock. was less than $100. Oh, it was I mean, cheap. Those ultra wide, those things weren't that rare at one time. You'd think right. there'd still be some sitting there. Well, there's a guy with a box of them on eBay. There's yeah. some still probably Maybe there. Maybe buy a couple to stick in the closet, then, too. You know, the way that thing is. And then finding a graphics card that would work. I think I'm, I am bought five graphics Did, cards. Did the same one? No, I bought one Voodoo 3 that wasn't really working. Well, and it was less, it wasn't expensive, so I knew that it probably wasn't working, but the thing about the Radeons, they're, psh, you can pick them up for less than $20 all day long on yeah, eBay. The other problem with the Radeons, <laughs> though, is they expire quick. I mean, I, I'm not, they're, I, they're not the best cards. And, right. and the Voodoo's, it's not like they're 100% accurate, but they go bad, too. But you're right, those things are become a lot more collectible. Well, than they, well it's not Radeons. just the Amiga people want them because they can soup up their Amigas with them. All the classic PC guys want them too, though, so yeah, yeah, I, I, they're I, none. Yeah, 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 if you well, want one, you got to find an old gaming PC at a flea market or something. Are you surprised at the rise in popularity of people getting into PC gaming from that era? Did that catch you off guard like it did me? I mean, I really, like I said, I, the reason I got the Amiga in the first place because it was, it was so cool, much cooler and more functional than PC. You know, and now, yeah. it's, oh. John, can you unlock that for the brand there? I see the brand coming back in. Uh, but uh, I was surprised that people got into PC gaming and p doing the PC stuff. It's, the PCs are so boring to me. You know? They're not yeah. like, look at what you're doing. I mean, you're really in there. This is the kind of stuff, you're not really gonna get that right. same kind of fun action on Mr. on the PC, you know? Well, by that point, all the games were the same. They're yeah. all like a Doom. Yeah, yeah, that's what- Doom I mean. or a real-time strategy or yeah. something else yeah. with, back in the day with an Amiga game. Every time you booted up a new game, you had no idea <laughs> what it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. You had, you a had, lot of times it'd be crap, but yeah. sometimes it'd be special. You had some nice original uh, games back there with the boxes and everything. It had lemmings. I remember seeing, looking at that. Mm -hmm. You get a little collection. You got, a, you got a decent little software collection at home. It's not bad. Yeah, I figured that. Uh, but uh, you, you come across stuff, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I want to get more into collecting oh, yeah. the games and oh, the boxes man. because they're lighter. And they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they don't take as much room and they're never going to lose their value because they're always going to be art. That's true. That's true. Plus, it's, they're a lot easier to, you, it, you know, all you have to do is just buy them, put them on the shelf. You don't have to try yeah. to figure out how to install anything on them or over, to keep them from overheating. Yeah. Not too bad. Listen, Bo, uh, it's been great talking to you. I hope you had a good time this oh, weekend, yeah. man. And uh, I hope you'll come back next year. We'll give it another shot. I'm anxious to see what kind of crazy nuttiness you come around with next time around. Well, I might bring it back, the same machine back next year, and I've only had it working for weeks. Yeah, I remember. Stable at, for days. I remember at ICC, you, were, you had just had a little setback when we did it, yeah. and even then I was looking at it, and I was just like, man, look at this, and the people at ICC were like, I was talking to some guys afterwards, they were like, man, he's got something crazy brewing over there. I was like, yeah, he does. That's the way he operates. So they, some of the people, they do exactly what you're up to. So I, yeah. I find it quite fascinating. I would like to get a lot more like demos and different kinds of games to show what it can do, but yeah. pretty much showing Quake <laughs> gives you the general idea. It worked for me, it worked <laughs> for me. Well, thank you, Mo. It's always yep. a pleasure, my friend. Yep. That's Mobius, everybody, from Boatfest 2024. Adios. Yep.